Hello, Lily. How are you? Nice to see you again. Um, well, I'm not too happy, Jo, mm -hmm. um, because you, the last time I came to see you, you know, you had to ring the ambulance on me, so I wasn't too impressed, um, and I don't know why you rang them. Um, so at this stage, I really, I'm really, really angry with you at this moment, so... Okay, um, I hear what you're saying, Lily, um, and I do recognise your anger. Um, well, Millie, I was very, very concerned about you. Um, well, let's face it, um, you are taking um, amphetamines. Well, I don't know if you still are taking them, but, and they were unprescribed for you. Now, that's not, well, that's a problem in, in itself. However, you were taking... Um, medication that you were not prescribed for and that has a very very deadly effect on someone now i was really worried that you were going to kill yourself yeah um but i don't think it was any of your business what i was taking so i just feel and i still strongly feel that you know i think what you did was wrong and i didn't like it and you know and i i got to stay in that stinking hospital for a month 30 blooming days they kept me in there because of what you did you know if you hadn't had just you know i mean so what i was taking those drugs but they were my drugs they're not your drugs i never stole them from you so i don't see why that you had to ring the ambulance and that's why i'm a bit peeved off right now with you and then they said i have to come back and see you well that just made me even more angry mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um yeah so that's how i feel well, you see, Lily, I have a duty of care, and I actually, and, and it, it's a very, very responsible job that I have. See, I, if I feel as though someone's at risk, and I do believe that you were, and possibly still are at risk, um, I have a responsibility to ensure that I protect you from yourself, because that is the law. I don't think I was doing anything wrong. Well, you may not think you are, but I, f I believe, and from what I could tell, and the fact that you were taking these drugs without being prescribed them. Now, you see, the other thing is what worried me too. You have been prescribed other medication, but you won't take that. No, because these ones make me feel okay, so I don't need the other drugs, because these ones were actually helping me, I felt. Well, no, they weren't actually, Lily, for the simple reason when you came to see me, um, you were talking to somebody else while you were talking to me. Now these drugs, that is some of the effect that they can have on a person, especially if they're not prescribed for the right condition. And the other thing is too, I could tell from your behaviour and the way that uh, you were telling me about the drugs, I have a duty of care to make sure that you are okay and the people around you are okay. Because sometimes when people take certain drugs that are not prescribed to them, you can actually do not only untold harm to yourself, but to also other people around you. What about with your two children? Well, they're with their father, so you know I'm not, I'm not putting them at risk. You know, um, they're safe with their dad. You know, I've 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 been taking this drug for you know for a while now, and I know what it was doing to. It was making me feel better, and then you had to go and spoil it and ring the ambulance, and I didn't need them. You know, and then I got stinking hospital for 30 days with doctors doing stuff that I didn't want them doing. And then I had to come back and see you. So how do you think that makes me feel, knowing that you've done all that? Because you've got a care of duty, as you say. You know, like, it's just, it's just stupid. Um, well, Lily, um, what did you expect me to do? If you came and saw me, like you did, on your own, uh, own uh, admission, what did you expect me to do? talk to me how can i talk to you when you're taking a drug that's altering your personality it well i i thought i was doing all right well think about it lily i the woman who come and sat in front of me i tell you what at the moment you are more lucid now than you what you were when you first came and saw me you sat there and stared at my face you didn't say a word and then when you did you laughed and told the person next to you who was invisible didn't. Yes, you did. And I knew then that there was there was something wrong. And then when you told me about the amphetamine use, and when I asked you where you were getting it from, you're getting it from the black market. No, I said I was getting it from the black man. Doesn't not the matter. Black well, that is the black market. 
He's selling it on the street. He's a friend of mine. It's doesn't, Robbie. Doesn't matter. Robbie is is a, trading in illegal drugs. Well, I've you know I've known Robbie for three years now, so he's not a stranger. He's he's my friend, and we see each other all the time. Well, well Robbie is a friend, as you say, who's selling you drugs that he is getting from the black market, that he is selling to you and he doesn't seem to care what happens to you so long as he gets his money. So, okay, what sort of friend is that? He's helping me with my medication. And it, Robbie's a doctor, is he? No, but no, well, he it, knows about all this stuff. That's why he's doing it. He knows how much money he can make out of it. Anyway, we're not going anywhere with this, but I can tell that you're a lot more lucid today, which means that you haven't been able to have the amphetamine use to the extent that you did before? No, because I've only just got out of hospital and they said that I had to come and see you. And they even drove me here. Like, they put me in a taxi and yes. came here. Because they wanted to be sure you were going to come back here. Okay. Yeah, cause, because when they said I was seeing you again, mm -hmm. I was even more peeved off. So I said, what, she's going to put me in hospital for another 30 days? Well, at the moment, I don't see any reason to. Well... I wouldn't because, go. Well, we're not going to talk about that now, Lily. What we're going to talk about is, okay, other than taking any more amphetamines and other than going back to hospital at this stage, what else would you like to talk about besides what's happened? But what, tell me what's, what's been going on in your life prior to you taking the amphetamines. I was happy. Prior to amphetamines? Or oh, prior to the amphetamines. Um... Well, well, no, I've had a horrible life. I got kicked out of the house. My husband and I split up. Mm -hmm. So now he's got the kids. You know, I'm homeless. Well, why do you think I was taking those drugs? Because it made me happy. It made me feel okay. Well, if we can, if I can help find somewhere, which I know I will be able to, help find you um, accommodation, um, another home. Um, would you like to have your children back? Yes. Of course I would. Well, you are aware that while you're taking the amphetamines and while you're not taking your prescribed medication, the chances of you having your children back are not good. I know, because Richard said yeah. um, that, you know, there's no chance of me. I can't even go and see the kids because he doesn't want to put them in harm's way, as he says. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm only taking the drugs. I'm not violent with them. Well, maybe I am a little bit, but, you know... I wouldn't hurt my kids because I love my kids. You know, they're my babies. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, but Richard says that he's not taken the chance of me seeing the kids in case something happens to them. Because, yeah, he just thinks of what I'm going to give them the drugs or something, which I wouldn't because I love my kids. But, you know, I'm I sure mean, you do. But, you know, I don't think that you could help me because well I'd like to try if you'd want to give me a chance well I don't know because I just feel like you're going to do something else and then I'll be put somewhere else well I had to do that Lily for the simple reason number one I had to protect you from yourself um, and by the looks of things I have because now you've come out of hospital you're no longer taking the amphetamines which means that okay you're now be more lucid you're now thinking clearer and the fact is you're now showing some emotion you're showing some feeling whereas before you didn't have anything you were as as they say you like as dead as anything emotionally mentally now you've got some feeling there yeah because i'm angry good because that's what you want to we want to have we want to have you to show some expression some emotion and you can't do that with the drugs well, I must admit that I do feel a bit better. Good. Um, you know, and my kids did come and visit me. Good. I'm really happy about that. Yeah, I that was That must too. have felt really good. Oh, it did. Good. It did. Good. Good. But I just didn't like the initial getting carted off in an ambulance to a stinking hospital that I didn't know. You know, and then just rocking up there like I had no choice. You never gave me a choice. 
of whether I wanted to go or not. Well, if you remember our conversation, Nelly, you didn't want to talk about it, you didn't want to know about it, and I did warn you, I did say, that if you continued your behaviour with me, I would be forced to take action. Yes. Okay. Yo, know, it's not something I like to do. I hate doing those sort of things because I know it takes away your person's power and it takes away any feeling of emotional control. However, when someone's taking whatever drugs they're taking, it, it takes over the brain, it takes over the mind and, then those, and the people who are taking them can no longer focus and make those valid decisions for themselves. So I want to see you be back with your children. Yeah, I really had a good time with them then. Good, good. So what do you say? There is a place I would like to refer you to because it's called Even Keel Association. Now, what Even Keel is, is it's a, it's a, it's a uh, support group. So it's not like a hospital? No, no, it's not a hospital at all. Okay. It's what it is, it's, it's, a, it's a place that's actually arranged. It has the people who are running it who have actually been drug addicts of all sorts of different types of degree themselves. Okay. And they've worked through these issues and they're there to help people like yourself. Yeah. To, you know, you can, and, and there'll be support, there'll be people you can call on. So if you have a really tough day or if you, you want to sort of take something, but you call them up and you say, help, I need some help. You can arrange for a meet up with a coffee, a coffee, a tea. Doesn't matter, you, know, you don't have to pay for it, whatever, or just to talk with them. So it's not somewhere that I go and stay? No, no, no. Okay. It's a, that it could be however many day or days or nights a week, it usually quite often is a day. You can make it easier for the people to get to. And, and um, you can get there by public transport, it's accessible for people. And you go there and there's so many other people like yourself. Yeah. You can talk about things that are going on, or you don't even talk at all. But you can, and they will give you some tips and some advice and, and, and provide you with some um, you know, direction. Yeah. And they'll let you know what they went through and how they overcome things. See, sometimes we don't know what to do. Yeah. Um, until we talk to someone else who's actually done it before. Yeah. How does that sound? Well. Give it a go, anyway. Well, yeah. But I've got, like, I've got nowhere to live. I've, but I'm, I'm going to organise that. Um, what we can do is... Um, there's uh, another organisation who I can actually get in touch with. They have um, cheap accommodation. Are you receiving any um, form of income? Yes, Centrelink payments. Okay. That's all. And it's for single? Single, single yeah, because I haven't got the kids, you so said I'm on like person. a youth allowance. Okay. I know that there, um, there are, there's an organisation where I can get in touch with them. Um, I can give you the name of them. I can see whether or not I can set you up with an appointment. Um, okay. any, um, you can go and have a talk to them. They have a list of um, uh, cheap accommodation or at least uh, something in you know to sort of pave the way for a little while see the whole idea is for you to take baby steps so that you can actually work in with this and then when you're ready and you're and you know I can sort of help and support with that so that your husband will allow your children first of all you have they can you can meet up you see them on, on, on you know so many hours a day and gradually as you start to win the ch your children's trust and your husband's trust with the children, then they might be able to have a sleepover one night. That would be nice. Yeah, but it takes time. Yeah. Okay. Now the other thing is too. Um, I, I, you still uh, with the same doctor we got the information from before? Yes. Okay. Now I can I have your consent again to actually contact the doctor and see what sort of medication he has prescribed to you? Yes. And whether or not we can get you back onto that again. Okay. How does that sound? That, that sounds good. Good. So uh, you'd really do that? I t totally. Okay. Yes, I'll do that. Now and then you know you might find you might have some relapses from time to time, but. Okay, we'll cover those as, as we as we meet them. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do? I've got your or got your details. If they haven't changed, have they? No. No. Okay. And then when it comes time to you want to be able to approach your husband and, and you know I can write you a letter, and anyone else who's involved can say that you know you you're working with treatments, you're doing all the right things, but that's in time. Okay. We need to take small steps. So you're not trying to trick me or anything? No, no. I'm just so glad that you've come out of the hospital 
you, you're not on amphetamines anymore. And please, Lily, please stay away from them because they're not prescribed for you. They're prescribed for people you know, for who are ADHD. And of course, that changes the chemical balance in your brain. And you don't need to have that trouble. Was I really that weird? You really, I'm sorry, but you really were not aware of how you're behaving. Mm. Okay? Yes. But that's that's the drugs. Yeah. Okay? And people take drugs because they're masking other pain. Okay. All right? And that's yeah. what you're coming back to see me, and that's why they sent you back to see me. Because once you got they got the drug out of your system, then they could recognise there's other pain there, and that's what the drugs were doing covering it all up. Yes. yes. So now we can start working on some other areas. But first of all, we need to find you a, a good place to live. Yes. Where And also too, don't worry, there's organisations that will be able to help you out with um, helping uh, toward furniture. There's many places. Um, and then on top of that, um, like I said, even keel, it's a really great place. You'll make a lot of new friends there. And that's what it is. It's um, people will help one another. So, um, I'm really glad to see you back, Lily, and you're looking so much better. Right. Your face looks fresher. I'm glad to hear that you've got a bit of emotion and feeling. You don't have your old friend there anymore, I've noticed. No. 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 I didn't even know he was there. No. <laughs> I didn't think so. No. <laughs> but still, you're looking good. Thank you. Okay. And I'm sorry for being angry with you when oh, I came in. Well, actually, it was a breakthrough. I was really happy to hear that. Really? Some feeling, some emotion. Finally, mm -hmm. we have Lily back. The real Lily. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to I'm going to give you I'm going to give you a referral for even keel. Yeah. And they on there will and I'll refer them, let them know what's uh, just what's what's happened. Yeah. Um and also to that um and I'll, and on there will be the address. Mm -hmm. Also to I'll contact your doctor with the consent that you've just given me. I'll find out uh, what type of medication you're on and what I'd like to do is I'll have to see see you back here next week. Okay. Now I'm also going to recommend to the doctor what that uh, for a mental health care plan. Now what that means is that you can come and see me without having to pay me. Okay. All right? That's good. Okay. So that's what we're going to do because I'm, I'm aware that you're limited funds. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's start off on that. I'll okay. see you next week. So which, so. You name a day next week when you'd like to come back and see me. Um, well, I don't know because I've got to make sure I've got somewhere to stay first. Yes, you will because I'll give you the name of the organisation. That's another okay. thing, you, and you can. I will call them up and let let find out which is the best day for you to come. I'll let them know your situation. Yeah. And if you like, while you're still here, I can make that phone call. Okay. And then that way, I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah. That which day would I, we can make the appointment? They will talk to you, yeah, right, while you're in my office. How does that sound? That sounds good. And then they can say, okay, whether or not they have any accommodation about it. At this time of year, they will have, because their funding would have just come through. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that way, and they would just take me like today. Yes, if they if they have a, have a vacancy for an appointment today, they'll take you today. If not, whenever the next, I think they do it about three times three times a week. Okay. What's today? Is today is Monday. Monday. It's Monday, and I, th I think they do Tuesday as well. So if they if their Monday's full full up, which it may be at this time of day, they can always make it for tomorrow. Okay. If yeah, I'm pretty sure that they'll. I'll let them know it's urgent. Yeah. Right. So and you know, where do I stay in the meantime? So okay, where are you staying now? Well, I've just got out of hospital. Okay. All but right. The last place <coughs> I was at, I don't think I haven't heard from anyone there because it was like five of us sharing this mm -hmm. place mm -hmm. but because I got I was in the hospital no one was allowed to come and see me no. so mm. um, only um, when Richard brought the kids mm. the last mm. couple of days before I left um, so I don't know maybe they probably won't let me back in I don't would well, to be honest I don't think I really want to go back there now I think it's a good idea because I don't think it was a very um, healthy viable no. place for you to be because it was actually um, encouraging and um, allowing you to continue on with the way you were. Yeah. There is um, a halfway a combination house with Salvation Army. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's only two dollars a day. Okay. Okay. You got some clothing with you? 
Uh, yeah, they. I had my clothes in the hospital. Okay, good. Take those with you. Yeah. Because what I'll uh, when when um, we call make make the call, I'll let them know that um, you are really desperate for accommodation. Yeah. Now, um, and we will make sure that you have somewhere that there are places around where it's like a hostel. Yeah. Where you can have your own room. Uh, right. Right. I'd prefer that. Yeah, have your own because yeah. I think it would be best. Yeah. Ha and we can. They, uh, between them and I, we'll look around and look for an appropriate hospital for a woman, um, for your own hospital. room. No, uh, no, uh, no, a hostel. Oh, hostel. hostel. No, yeah. not a hostel. I thought you were going to put me back no, in here. No, 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 hostel. Okay. And uh, what it is, is um, you share a kitchen. Oh, yeah. Right? Uh, you pay so much towards the hostel and um, you, um, they provide the food, but yeah. you pay so much. Oh, and okay. it helps you get back into the routine of paying rent again. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yep. So how does that sound? That sounds really good. Good. And I'm really sorry for yelling at you. That's before. okay. So I understand. Sorry. I do understand, really. So, okay. So you want to come back next week and see me? Yes. Okay. What day next week is the best for you? Okay. Well, if, um, I don't know, Monday sounds good okay. next week. Same time? Yeah, yes, please. Okay. And I'll write that down for you so you don't forget. Okay. All right. So, all right. So what we're, so what we're doing is I'm... In a moment, we're going to make that call yeah. um, so that we can find out what accommodation, what hostels are available for yeah. you, for you to have your own room and whatever's, whatever's going uh, that's going to be best for you. And then I'm going to contact your doctor with your consent um, and talk about your medication. Um, and the other thing is too is uh, what else is there? And also you're going to come back next week and send me. Yeah. Anything else that you can think of that you would like um, to do? You said you were going to write a letter maybe my husband. Oh, that's so later on. Okay. At that, it's so too early at the moment. Not now. No, not now because okay. you've only just come back to me now. Yep. Okay. You don't have a, you don't have a place to stay yet. No. No. So we what we want, even if you're in a hostel, that's still not um, an appropriate place for your children. What we'll do is while you're in the hostel, we can yeah you know, be looking out for um, for whether it's a two or three two or three bedroom place. Yeah. Uh, whether it's a unit. But we don't want you that's going to be in a place where there's too many people. No. Right? Um, and so we want to be in an area, but not too isolated. Um, how's the situation with your family at the moment? Um, As in your, your biological parents or family? Um, well, they never came and seen me. Mm -hmm. um, but they did call a couple of times okay. just to see how it was going. Um, yeah. But, that, yeah, they just... Yeah, they just said that they weren't ready to come and see me yet. Okay. Look, give them time, okay? Yep. And what the other, I can bring them in at a later stage with your consent to show them how much you're improving and how things are changing, right? Yep. And then that way they can be more, give them more support to you. Yeah. See, at the moment they're a bit afraid too. Yeah. Right? Um, and I can understand that, but I can understand your hurt and pain too. Yeah. Um, so let's let's work on steps at a time. Okay. All right. Now next week um, I've got some things I want to cover with you. But at the moment let's work on you coming back next next Monday same time. Okay. And oh. are you going to ring them people? So yes. Can yes, we can do that once we've actually finished yep. this. Okay. Okay. All right, Lily. That's excellent. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you next week, and you then will. also we'll make that call. Yep. Thank you. Good.